mode. Hi everyone. Welcome to our webinar on meeting the technology needs of the differently abled student. Carol Curie Subzak has been in IT since 1985 and has worked at the University of Southern Maine since 1993. She holds degrees in psychology and education from the University of Southern Maine and in instructional technology from Utah State University. While she has done extensive teaching, her primary responsibility has been student computing support. She has been a pre presenter at SIGOX most recently in Chicago. She has worked with Disability Services Center for many years to ensure that adaptive technology was made available to students in the university's computing facilities. She lives in South Portland, Maine. Before we get started, and before I turn it over to Carol, just a few rules of the route, road. By default, everyone has been muted, so if you have a question, just go ahead and use the question box, and I'll help uh, let Carol know what the question is. Now with that, I'll turn it over to Carol. Thank you, Carol. Hello. <clears throat> um, good afternoon. Good morning. I guess it's afternoon where I am. might be morning where you are. Um, I did deliver this uh, presentation last th uh, fall in Chicago, and I was excited when Beth asked me if I would do it as a webinar. And of course, the technology failed for me um, as my hard drive had died, so I had to do a little bit of recreating of my PowerPoint. Um, but I, I want to start with, as far as from the paper, um, with a little bit of a, the abstract and the introduction um, from the paper. Um, and just so that we're all on the same page, uh, IT here at USM provides installation of and training with various software and hardware applications for students with a wide range of disabilities in collaboration with what is called the Disability Services Center here, was the Office for Assistance to Students with Disabilities, uh, and they recently made that change. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the University of Southern Maine. We're part of the, um, it's part of the state university system. It's spread across three main campuses. University of Southern Maine is spread across three main campuses in this purple area of the state of Maine. Um, Portland and Gorham are about 16 miles apart, and Lewiston is sort of up here in this corner. Um, it's up here at the top of, of the purple box is about 40, um, about 40, 45 miles away from um, from where my prim primary office is. The Division of Information Technology is responsible for classroom and lab support, help desk administration, telecommunications, media services, software support for faculty and staff, video conferencing support, student computing support, network infrastructure and management, technical services or hardware support, um, database and application development and support, and the campus computing store. Um, the uh, our we recently um, we're actually in the middle of an IT restructure and administrative review of IT um, in that we all have become um, system University of Maine system employees so um, instead of just campus employees uh, so I will have been um, providing one of the things I also do is training um, and so for instance up here at Presque Isle and Fort Kent um, last um, September October he was upgrading their uh, one of their servers and it died a horrible sudden death and I was asked to do training uh, less than a week later was able to use some stuff that I use locally and so I serve and Fort Kent is a good um, probably six hour drive from where I am here in Portland. So we have a wide range um, of uh, a wide reach uh, um, that we provide, uh, that system IT provides. Now section 508 is, um, this is, I've, I've put a direct quote from it here, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, section 508 is the one that established the requirements for electronic and information technology development. requires federal electronic and information technology to be accessible to people with disabilities, including employees and members of the public. So all public institutions must comply with these federal mandates. There are three key pieces of legislation that are pertinent to this discussion. The 1986 uh, reauthorization of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, the Telecommunications Accessibility Enhancement Act of 1988, and the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. According to the ADA, 
of 1990, Section 508 is the one that establishes these particular requirements. So there are um, various categories of disabilities, those that, that there are sort of four main ones that we deal with. Um, visual, um, auditory, which is, is hearing impairment primarily, motor, um, anything that are physical, um, fine motor, uh, fine or gross motor um, abilities, uh, any limitations there, and cognitive, which includes a, a long list of learning disabilities, including dyslexia, um, ADHD, and autism, the autism spectrum. So what is assistive technology and why is it my job? In the summer of 1995, the University of Southern Maine uh, engaged in um, engaged some consultants to complete a site visit and audit and report of the availability of assistive technology at the university pursuant to the mandates of federal and state law. In 1997, USM received funding from the University of Maine system to establish a collection of adaptive technology hardware and software as well as a support person to maintain those collections. So in 2008, with the elimination of that adaptive technology support specialist, IT was faced with the continued collaboration with the Disability Services Center to provide adaptive technology training to students. So the report included several recommendations um, for basic assistive technologies in two basic categories, equipment and resources, and training support and maintenance. Equipment and these recommendations from 1995, um, the equipment and resources um, included screen magnification, OCR, or optical character recognition for digitization and text, which um, required a flatbed scanner and text-to-speech, word prediction software, and an availability of adaptive input devices, which were generally USB access. And then under their training support and maintenance um, report recommendation, they stated clearly defined protocol for identifying, acquiring, implementing, training on, and maintaining assistive technology for staff. Specific hardware and software needs to be a component of a clearly defined software effort, service effort. And hands-on training with the assistive technology to increase the expertise of other trainers, not just the end users. That probably has been the hardest piece um, for us is that there are some things that um, some assistive technology pieces that are very difficult to use um, or to be trained on. For example, um, someone who's blind and using a screen reader like a screen reader like JAWS, um, it reads everything on the screen. And if you've ever experienced that, it's very difficult to to uh, listen to. Uh, but someone who doesn't have um, sight to be able to read the screen isn't distracted um, by seeing on the screen as well as hearing it read to them. Um, so that one is particularly hard to do the training with. It also, the report also um, inc included these proactive steps be taken, um, which is for high incidence need to, to look at what those um, most commonly used university resources were. Um, improving the accessibility of activities that are commonly required of most students, the provision of hardware and software support, maintenance, and training, to anticipate that needs for individualized assistive technology will arise, and especially to anticipate an increased need for assistive technology. And what we have done here is we have a, a basic um, we created an image for the AT stations, for the assistive technology stations in our computer labs that include this, for this past academic year, JAWS version 14, which is a screen reader, Kurzweil 3000 version 12, which is um, Dragon 11, which is, um, has been called um, Dragon Naturally Speaking uh, in the past, um, which is a speech, speech recognition, Inspiration, which is used for idea mapping, and um, that's actually used, there are a number of, of education instructors, uh, faculty that are using inspiration and kidspiration um, for other than um, 
as an assistive technology uh, for someone with, dis with a disability. They're using it uh, in helping children to do um, brainstorming and idea mapping. A natural reader, <coughs> excuse me, natural reader, which is a text-to-speech um, program. We added in the past year um, the MAGIC, which is a screen magnification um, program. We had one that was called Zoom Text, and it had some problems with interacting with Windows 7. Um, and while they may have um, um, worked out a lot of those problems, now, a year later, year and a half later, we had enough problems that we chose to go to MAGIC. Um, MAGIC is done by the same uh, company that does Dragon. Um, and so, uh, so the, the expertise and the overlap of that program was there as well. Um, we are using, uh, recommending to students um, and have available the Windows 7 Ease of Access Center, um, which includes a number of, with like sticky keys and, and um, uh, large font size and some of those kind of things. Adobe Reader 11. On the Macintosh, the accessibility features that are built in there. Uh, VoiceOver is the speech recognition tool on Mac, and also um, Ghost Reader is another one that we use on our Macs that we've added um, a Macintosh. We've only been PC with our assistive technology stations for a number of years, just in the past year and a half or so that we've come up with a prototype um, primar on, of a Mac machine, primarily because we had such a huge proportion of students who were coming in for um, to establish on their own computers um, some of these programs that they would either purchase or some of them are available for free. And we found that a very large proportion of them were Mac users coming out of the public schools. Especially here in the state of Maine, there was initiative. Um, I think it's been about um, eight years now uh, that they started putting Mac um, MacBooks in the hands of middle school students um, and or uh, and through high school. Uh, many schools have made the switch to iMacs. My, the public school where my youngest one goes uh, made the switch to iMacs, um, iPads, excuse me, this year. And uh, so with a, a larger proportion of Mac users with the student base, um, we've had to increase our skills there as well. Now the budget that we had, um, I sort of uh, came up with an approximate budget. Um, we only have, um, I, I have the software licensing for 10 stations on these three campuses in various locations. Uh, right now we do our um, hardware we replace on a three-year three, three year cycle, so that costs um, about, uh, it says $100 per seat, it's actually about $1,000 per seat. Um, but divided over three years, so that comes out to about $300 or so per year um, for the hardware, for the computer itself. The AT uh, assistive technology applications, um, most of them have an annual renewal, and the pricing that I've included from last year, uh, JAWS was about $1095. Um, plus the um, maintenance agreement was about $200 for a single user. With a 10-user pack, it was considerably um, less expensive uh, per user, uh, $7,200, which included the SMA. Kurzweil, $3,000 is about $1,400. Dragon, naturally speaking, is about $150 for a single user. Inspiration is $39 for a single user. Natural Reader is free. Magic was um, $400 to $600, depending on um, how many you, uh, um, depending on your uh, full-time equivalent, uh, the, the, your students, your enrollment, uh, and the maintenance agreement was uh, $95, and Ghost Reader was $40 for a single user. So that is approximately $3,800 per year per seat uh, to maintain these. Um, so we're putting out for this, for our campus alone, we're putting out about $38,000 a year in the support of assistive technology. Um, the, our enrollment, as far as for comparing to the size of, of your campus, um, our enrollment is approximately um, 8,000 full-time equivalent. We also created, because we were doing so much 
individualized um, training with students and there was sort of limited availability. Um, my staff has, has reduced. We've lost some staffing. We've lost budget. So as that has continues to get smaller and smaller, we have fewer people. Um, there was a major rollover of both the director of the Disability Services Center and the support staff there that work directly with students um, were much more uh, tech savvy than the previous people were. We started to take most of the training and trying to get them documented into, um, tried to make them single page. Um, uh, a brochure so that they could get up and running um, quickly with some of them. This happens to be for taking a text file to MP3 for Kurzweil. And we provide those brochure, brochures for the Disability Services Center. So if a student has a little bit of tech savvy, and many of them, if they have disabilities, they've come through the public schools, and um, so they just their needs just increase a little bit in, in sort of the content of, of what they're doing. Um, to make it so that it's, it's secondary school level uh, instead of, of um, K through 12 level, the, their requirements may be a little bit more um, content specific, um, scientific, higher level science or math. Uh, and so we try, to, try to, to meet the needs of as many as we can. Our future plans here at USM, we're continuing collaboration with the Disability Services Center. Uh, there is a group system-wide, um, so the entire state university system that meets twice a year. All of the disability support specialists um, meet uh, or the people who provide those services at each of the, the seven campuses of the University of Maine system. They get together physically twice a year. Um, they have a listserv and what have you. And we are, um, now that we are a part of the system, we also, um, I personally have a presence and go to those meetings uh, to try to sort of pick up any pointers or offer any advice um, while we're there and sort of to, to sort of um, lurk a little bit to see just what kinds of, if there are different needs that are arising as students come on board. Uh, we are working to provide documentation and training um, as an online, that's one of our, our plans that we're working on, to have an improved web presence, not just for the um, specific training or for the Disability Services Center, but for all of our, um, for the entire, uh, the, the university websites to uh, be more accessible because there are so many that are not. Um, we happen to be using a content management system and that has helped uh, a lot. Um, in identifying some of the needs there. And the, we are trying to have the Disability Services Center here at USM be more proactive, that they are uh, where they have uh, more tech savvy than previous um, personnel have been. We're asking, we're trying to help them to be more proactive as the students come on board. There is something that's called um, a, the Web Accessibility Initiative. <clears throat> excuse me, and I've included the website here. Um, the Web Accessibility, accessibility Initiative um, in, helps to describe and help people to make their websites or PowerPoint presentations, um, anything that is being utilized in education, strat strategies, guidelines, I can't talk, and resources to make the web accessible to people with that wide range of disabilities. Some of them um, visible disabilities, a, a much huger proportion of them are not visible um, or physical disabilities. Some of the resources that are available to us um, as I try to, to stay on board, um, try to stay, keep up with the curve, there's no way that I can stay ahead of the curve. Um, is the Microsoft Accessibility Help. Firefox has an accessibility support page. Um, Apple also has an accessibility home page. There's something called AdaptTech um, Project, uh, which has a resource page. The Adaptive Technology Resource Center Technical Glossary, which helps with understanding so much of the um, terminology that's out there. Uh, there's a place called the Center for Accessible Technology. There's a website called Access It. Uh, ADA.gov and adata.org are both places that help identify um, the best ways to work with people with, with disabilities. For instructors, 
Um, there are, these are a number of, of websites that you can go to. How can I tell whether a software application is accessible? Um, the High Tech Center <coughs> training unit of the California Community Colleges is a, um, a website that has um, a huge list of um, assistive technology programs um, and hard, both hardware and software that many of which are free. The North Carolina Assess Assistive Technology Project is uh, primarily a list of um, programs uh, that are free and available to, um, to universities and individuals. The National Assistive Technology and Education Network and um, Section 508 information. <coughs> These, um, this, I'm taking you to the website for, um, this is one of the places that takes you to a, a huge number of, um, which happens to be the University of Athens in Georgia, that um, there are uh, a number of um, both activities, publications, theses, courses, projects, free adaptive technology, um, and assistive technology software. Um, the list is quite extensive by category, um, so there's, and, and all of these are free. So you can browse by disability, you can browse by category, and there's lots of stuff that's there. We've tended to um, minimize the amount of software that we have run, um, that we're including. Um, I, I like to not go the route of including um, too many options uh, because we can't we can't stay on top of them as far as for the training and the changes and what have you. So we have opted to um, go with some um, with very few of the free software pieces. Uh, that may change as our budgets continue to to shrink. Um, but right now we've sort of gone with the key software uh, programs, the, the applications that are. Um, most widely recognized for a wide number of, um, of disabilities and a wide range of costs as well. But that's one of the other things as we move forward, we'll be looking at some of the things that are free or um, of nominal expense to both the individual as we try to have people, um, they have their own computers so they're not just using the computer labs that we have here. Um, that's all I have for information. I talked really fast. I'm hoping that you have some questions that I can go back to, um, some things that you might want to talk about, anything that I can clarify. I'm just waiting to see if any questions come in, Carol. Sure. We actually just recently um, lost the person who has been doing the uh, images and all of the, the imaging for the AT um, stations that we have, um, she recently took an early retirement and that position will not be replaced. So I'm down yet another person who had developed significant skills. I don't see any questions coming in yet, Carol. Okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, we have a question from Janice. We were having problems with our new Citrix technology and some of our adaptive uh, assistive technology apps. Has anyone else had these problems? We don't get a lot of use with them, but I have heard that there have been some, um, some issues. They weren't major showstoppers most of the time. Um, I can't elaborate on that myself, but maybe somebody else can. If anyone else has any insight, please feel free to just chat in any information you may have. Carol, I also realize um, this has not, nothing to do with your presentation, but there may have been a logistical issue when I was looking back at the registration forms. It had noon central time, so that oh. may have accounted for uh, some of the decreased attendance we're seeing. So you and I might need to talk about that right after we're done. Sure. 
Well, I can, I can, I know that you've got something happening, um, but mm -hmm. I could stay available for a little while longer if other people join in. Great, thank you. That one. From our attendees on, does anyone else have any other questions? I'd be curious to know how many of you are doing something similar to what Carol's doing. I'm wondering if how many may have specialized, um, if you have an adaptive technology or assistive technology specialist that is a part of IT, or if that is a separate, um, a separate office. So feel free to respond to Carol. Um, had another comment from Janice. Uh, this goes along with some pushback from our systems people who want to go back to assistive technology machines rather than mainstreaming apps. To what extent are people trying to put them everywhere rather than on specific machines? Do you have any idea, Carol? Yeah, we have not seen that. Our Disability Services Center has some, some um, has some some specific uh, setups. They have they expanded the number of computers that they have available for students to go into their office and use. Uh, they have a little bit. They reestablished their area. Um, I have not had requests, and in fact, over the years, we've actually had a lot of resistance from, um, for example, our libraries, which are a different division than IT, which personally doesn't make sense to me, but um, we've had resistance from our libraries to provide, they didn't feel that it was their responsibility to provide um, assistive technology or adaptive technology when indeed it is um, if you've got machines that are being widely used. Thank you. With so many of the, um, both with Macintosh and with Windows, the accessibility features that they have built in now, um, a lot of students will have some at least minor experience with those so that they can be accessed. Those are built into the operating systems. And so those can be utilized. Um, and we just maintain, like I said, we sort of, we try to have um, one or two stations in our major lab areas that have the uh, heavy-duty guns for applications with Kurzweil, for example, and, and some of those. Um, we do not have microphones um, or cameras enabled on all of our, um, or speakers on our lab computers. They have to bring headsets. Thank you, Carol. You're very um, welcome. I don't see any other questions coming in right now, so um, I do appreciate certainly the time you've taken, and for those who've been able to attend, thank you so much. This was recorded, so it should be available on our website within the next couple days. Um, thank you very much for attending the SIGUX webinar. Thanks, Beth.